This offseason, I saw a bit of shifting when it comes to the power levels of each team. Do you think these changes actually matter in Minnesota, or can this team be okay? Hell no, these changes don't matter. <laughs> We now know how all 32 teams' 53-man rosters will look come week one. Let us dive into the five biggest winners and the five biggest losers of the 2023 NFL offseason. Winner, New York Jets. When you acquire a four-time league MVP and true franchise quarterback, you'll always be an offseason winner. Such is the case with the Jets, who managed to complete a trade for longtime Green Bay Packers signal caller Aaron Rodgers. Adding gravy on top of this whole thing, the Jets didn't really have to give up much of anything for him. They swapped 2023 first round picks and the Jets landed the number 170 selection as well in exchange for the number 42 and number 207 picks plus a 2024 conditional second rounder that can become a first. So yeah, there it is. The Jets finally have a bona fide superstar quarterback who can lift this franchise to relevance. But that's not all of course. The Jets brought in speedster McCole Hardman and ex-Packers Alan Lazard and Randall Cobb to further bolster a pass catching core led by rising star Garrett Wilson and Corey Davis. Oh, and bringing in Rodgers close friend Nathaniel Hackett to serve as the OC was another tidy piece of work by GM Joe Douglas. That should make the transition from Green Bay to New York that much easier for A-Rod. With a deep mix of veteran stalwarts and young studs on both sides of the ball, these Jets are ready for takeoff in 2023, pun intended. Loser, Arizona Cardinals. The Cardinals were the NFL's third worst team last year. And amazingly, they somehow got a lot worse on paper this year. For starters, the Cardinals lost their top two pass rushers, J.J. Watt to retirement and Zach Allen to the Denver Broncos in free agency. Respected veteran wideout A.J. Green also called it quits. Starting corner Byron Murphy left for the Minnesota Vikings. But wait, there's more. Pro Bowl safety Buda Baker requested a trade from the organization, so it looks like someone is on borrowed time there in the desert. Oh, and after failing to find a trade for their liking, the Cardinals simply released superstar wideout DeAndre Hopkins and took on a $22.6 million dead cap hit for his services. Starting quarterback Kyler Murray is also recovering from surgery on a torn ACL he suffered last year, and he is expected to miss a large chunk of the 2023 season. But hey, other than that, it has hasn't been the worst offseason for a franchise that always seems to find itself in complete disarray, I guess. Mm. Winner, Seattle Seahawks. The Seahawks were one of football's biggest surprise teams in 2022, finishing as the number seven seed in the NFC with a 9-8-0 record. That was thanks to the efforts of quarterback and comeback player of the year award winner, Geno Smith. And of course, a stacked rookie class headlined by Tariq Woolen, Kenneth Walker, Charles Cross, and Abe Lucas. Well, the rich got richer all right this offseason. A whole lot richer. John Schneider won free agency by bringing back old friend Bobby Wagner following the latter's one-year run with the Los Angeles Rams. To bolster the pass rush, he also signed ex-Bronco standout Draymond Jones. Then Schneider further crushed the offseason by winning the draft, as he snagged Illinois corner Devin Witherspoon, widely viewed as the best defensive back in this draft, at fifth overall, and Jackson Smith and Jigba at number 20 overall. Like Witherspoon, Smith and Jigba could easily emerge as the best player at his position for this class. So, so, oh, Geno Smith now has DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, Smith and Jigba, and Walker as his main weapons. Well, that was a short and quick rebuild in Seattle. Watch them return to Super Bowl contention in 2023. They are ready to continue rocking in the post-Russell Wilson era. Loser? Minnesota Vikings. The defending NFC North champions surely aren't operating like a team looking to build off an unexpected 13-win season. They released four-time Pro Bowl running back Dalvin Cook, which is puzzling for a team that is trying to win now. They had football's fifth worst scoring defense in 2022, and the only big moves to address it was to sign an above-average corner in Byron Murphy and an oft-injured defensive lineman in Marcus Davenport. The Vikes traded star pass rushers Darius Smith to the Cleveland Browns, man cut well is Expected veteran linebacker Eric Kendricks. Patrick Peterson, their top corner of 2022, signed with the Pittsburgh Steelers. How can the Vikings get anywhere close to 13 wins again without their second best offensive weapon in Cook and three other key starters on what was already an atrocious defense? As currently constructed, nine wins feels like the ceiling for this team.
Winner, Derek Carr. In Carr's nine seasons with the black and silver, they made the postseason on just two occasions and failed to win a game. Now, that's not an indictment on Carr, who single-handedly kept the Raiders semi-relevant following a decade of misery from 2003 to 2013. Without him, the Raiders would have been an annual contender for the first overall pick. But it was pretty clear that the Raiders' new brass at Josh McDaniels and Dave Ziegler did not buy Carr as their long-term QB. So, one year after signing him to a $121.5 million dollar extension, the Raiders wound up releasing Carr, immediately making him the top QB available on the market. Carr went on to sign a four-year deal with the New Orleans Saints worth $150 million, and boy is he gonna love his tenure in the Big Easy. For one, he goes from the unforgiving AFC West division to the laughable NFC South. With Tom Brady now retired, Carr is automatically the best QB in that division. He won't be short on weapons either. Chris Olave, Michael Thomas, Alvin Kamara, Jamal Williams and Juwan Johnson give Carr more than enough playmakers to work with. The Saints also boast a top 10 offensive line and defense, giving Carr valuable support on both sides of the ball. He literally never had a good defense in Oakland slash Vegas. Well, that's not going to be a problem in New Orleans, and with the Saints having the second easiest strength of schedule for 2023, the pieces are all there for him to have an MVP-like career. Loser. Las Vegas Raiders. Carr may be a winner, but his ex-team sure ain't. It's very difficult to comprehend what the Raiders' long-term plan is here. We understand the idea of releasing Carr and starting afresh at quarterback, but they really think Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be the needle mover? Really? All right. The Raiders signed Jimmy G to a three-year deal worth $67.5 million, which is interesting considering his inconsistent play and long injury history. That is, uh... Yeah, that's a lot of money for a guy who's only played a full season once. The Raiders did land ex-New England Patriot Jacoby Myers in free agency, but they traded away star tight end Darren Waller to the New York Giants, so that's essentially a wash if you look at it. Las Vegas' secondary has always been an issue, and yet they did nothing to address it. So, essentially, they're asking Garoppolo and Myers to be a giant upgrade over Carr and Waller. How does that make any sense. Mark Davis just seems to be okay with mediocrity. There is no other way around it. Oh well, at least Vegas fans can continue to celebrate the Golden Knights 2023 Stanley Cup Championship. Winner, Chicago Bears. With Justin Fields already in their laps, the Bears were content to trade away the first overall pick to a QB needy team. They wound up trading that pick to the Carolina Panthers, who took Bryce Young. With that haul, the Bears got a bona fide WR1 in DJ Moore. With their first round pick, they addressed the franchise's organization need for an offensive tackle by snagging Darnell Wright. In free agency, they fixed up the league's worst scoring D by signing TJ Edwards, Pro Bowl linebacker Tremaine Edmonds, and Demarcus Walker. They then signed running back Deontay Foreman to form a 1-2 duo with Khalil Herbert. So there it is. Defense is fixed, and Fields now has more Darnell Mooney, Chase Claypool, Foreman, and Herbert as his weapons. Now, this isn't to say that the Bears will be a playoff team in 2023, but you know, they're finally on the right path to long-term contention. Loser, green Bay Packers. You can argue all you want that the Rodgers departure was necessary and inevitable, but at the end of the day, his exit does not help the Packers in the short term. Green Bay did not exactly get great value in return for the future Hall of Famer. Even if Jordan Love ends up being the real deal, the Packers should be kicking themselves for not getting a better return for him, pure and simple. We didn't like Green Bay's inactivity in free agency or their draft either. The front seven is a strength as is, but they used their first founder on Iowa edge rusher Lucas Van Ness? How about an offensive tackle? or a weapon for love. Green Bay used second and third round picks on Luke Musgrave and Tucker Craft. I'm sorry, but on what earth do you need to use two early round selections on tight ends? Seriously, when has Matt LaFleur ever prominently featured tight ends in his offense? Green Bay refused to go all in during Rodgers' prime years, and they are doing very little to help Love develop for his first full year as a starter. Green Bay, what's the end goal here? Winner? AFC North. When do you see an entire division win the offseason in the same year? Well, I mean, all four AFC North clubs sure did. The Baltimore Ravens finally got Lamar Jackson under contract long term. 
signing him to a five-year extension worth $260 million. Fixing the passing game was a necessity, so they signed Odell Beckham Jr. and Nelson Aguilar while also grabbing Speedy Zay Flowers in round one. Look at that, now the Ravens are ready to roll on all fronts. The Cincinnati Bengals addressed their biggest problem at O-line by signing pro bowler Orlando Brown Jr., who was once a mainstay on their rivals in the Kansas City Chiefs. Getting Miles Murphy with the number 28 pick to bolster their D-line was a huge coup as well. Heck, even the Cleveland Browns did pretty well. They got some valuable receiving depth by trading for Elijah Moore and by drafting Cedric Tillman in round three. Needing to upgrade the defensive line to round Miles Garrett, they acquired Zadarius Smith and signed Dalvin Tomlinson and Obo Onkoronkwo. Bringing an ex-chief safety Juan Thornhill in free agency was also a smooth move on Andrew Barry's end. The Pittsburgh Steelers won the draft by getting offensive tackle Broderick Jones Jones and Joey Porter Jr., the son of the ex-Steelers star linebacker. Signing future Hall of Famer Patrick Peterson to shore up the secondary was grade-A work by Omar Khan, too. So with that, the Steelers, who won nine games a year ago, are set to go on defense. On offense, they can expect major growth from Kenny Pickett and George Pickens. Everything is trending up in Steel City following a short-term rebuild. Well, let the race for the NFC North begin. Loser. Running backs. If you didn't believe the notion that the running back is a devalued position, well, you better believe it now. Dalvin Cook, a four-time 1,000-yard rusher and four-time pro bowler, released by the Vikings and spent well over a month on the open market. Two-time rushing champion Ezekiel Elliott, released by the Dallas Cowboys and a cap-saving move, he spent more than four months on the open market. 2017 rushing champion Kareem Hunt, one of the best number two backs in the NFL, unsigned. Saquon Barkley and Josh Jacobs, hit with the franchise tag because their respective franchise didn't believe in investing in them long term, even though they were the MVPs of their teams last year. Austin Eckler sought a trade from the Chargers after a contract dispute. They ultimately agreed to add incentives to his deal, but nothing else. Even 1,000-yard rusher and rushing TDs champion Jamal Williams only signed a bargain three-year deal worth $12 million with the Saints. That's the life of an NFL running back now, folks. They just don't value you the way that they used to. But who are some of the other big winners and losers of the 2000s? 2023 offseason? Let us know in the comment section below. If you like this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton, and I, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS, though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.